Since I talked about JRPGs in my videos, a lot of people sent me this article about Valkyria Chronicles 4. That's weird, because as far as I remember, I'm on record of not liking the first Valkyria Chronicles. The dialogues for the game is written like a kindergartner attempting to make a deep and serious poem. I've played a lot of JRPGs, and it's very rare for me to cringe at the dialogues, but man, this game is really touching my cringe button, and I just couldn't take it anymore. To be fair, the gameplay was quite fun. I like myself some tactical turn-based combat. It's just, man, the dialogues, like, holy crap, who wrote this? But regardless, we have Valkyria Chronicles 4, and it's on Steam, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. If you want to buy the game, it's out now at full price. Can't say if I recommend it or not, but it's out there. Okay, now let's talk about this most requested article. What do you got for me? Valkyria Chronicles 4's sexual harassment problem is unacceptable in 2018. Ooh. Boy, this is gonna be good. The video game industry has issues when it comes to the portrayal of women, even though things have improved in recent years as we begin to see more female leads in games like Horizon Zero Dawn, as well as more games enabling players to choose their gender like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Despite infamous claims in the past that it would be too costly to implement, the problem is nowhere near resolved. Oh, wow. Oh, freaking wow, we haven't even gone to the first paragraph, and I'm already sensing that this writer is an ideologue. You are celebrating the fact that video games have more female leads, and you can select your protagonist in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. What kind of cave have you been living in? Video games have done this for decades now, and I'm not gonna even bother to debunk you on this, because you can just Google them yourselves. Also, what's with the claim that the gender selection option would be too costly? Here's an article about Assassin's Creed Unity, with Ubisoft attempting to explain why Assassin's Creed Unity's co-op has no playable women. To put it in a nutshell, it's basically a waste of time, resources, money, and they need to focus on many other things. Considering the launch for Assassin's Creed Unity, I can certainly see why they're saying that. But the writer of this article, and also the writer of the previous one, is not a gamer. This writer is an ideologue. You can tell that she's an ideologue because the first paragraph basically says, I don't care if it's double the work, it is no excuse for a human being to not represent half of the population. First paragraph in and you have displayed such immeasurable ignorance. And then the writer said that it's a tired excuse to perpetuate even more cycle of sexism and underrepresentation, as if not representing women in Assassin's Creed Unity perpetuates a cycle of sexism. You can really tell that this writer is on the verge of going to a nervous breakdown. What I find very hilarious about this is that the writer cancelled her pre-order for Assassin's Creed Unity. A smart business decision for your average consumers, but you're not doing it for the right reasons. Anyway, we're just one paragraph in and this article is already sounding stupid. The upcoming Dead or Alive 6, which allegedly tones down its sexualized nature, has since revealed a limited edition bundle for Japan that includes a body pillow of two of the game's women in- Whoa, 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 stop right there. The <laughs> they, they actually sold Dakimakuras and a freaking sexy mouse pad for the limited edition of Dead or Alive 6. Oh boy, oh boy. Did Team Ninja finally realize that it's not worth it on toning down the sexy and they're just gonna continue being a fan service fighting game? Eh, whatever, I'm still gonna buy Soul Calibur 6 anyway. Video games have an uncomfortable history of sexism, and companies have failed to make the industry more inclusive for women, non binary, and trans people who don't fit stereotypical expectations of. Of a gamer. These are issues that spread far beyond a single title. Video games have an uncomfortable history of sexism. Define uncomfortable. Companies have failed to make the industry more inclusive for women, non-binary, and trans people who don't fit stereotypical expectations of a gamer. Define failed. Define stereotypical expectations of a gamer. What kind of expectations that gamers have towards these women, non-binary, and trans people? I don't get you, writer. However, times have changed. This year has been defined by the hashtag me movement and women okay, around okay, the world okay, okay. slow down slow down slow down what the hell does this have to do with hashtag me too why are you talking about hashtag me too i thought we're talking about valkyria chronicles 4 the writer then mentioned the sexism culture at some of the game studios like riot and quantic dreams it seems to me that you have an agenda writer and you're gonna use valkyria chronicles 4 to push it i want to see how you do it thanks to countless brave people coming forward and speaking out against such abuses, a worldwide re-examination on sexual misconduct has begun. Unfortunately, it seems Valkyria Chronicles 4 didn't get the memo. 
Okay, Ryder, let me get this straight. You just talked about sexism and discrimination towards women in real life with hashtag Me Too and the sexism culture in certain game studios, and now you're gonna pivot from all of that to talk about sexism that happens in a video game. Those two things are not even in the same freaking realm. Try again. The writer then explained what happened in the game. In a nutshell, a guy grabs a girl's ass and the girl punches him. There we go, nothing too controversial about this. This is a fictional story. It was a sexual joke. Joke. Nobody should have a problem with this, but the writer has to share her take. This scene sets the tone for the rest of Valkyria Chronicles 4's campaign. Although the game has a diverse cast of male and female characters with unique personalities, the women on either side of the war are degraded, sexually harassed, and mistreated. Writer, you just said that you only played the first couple of hours in that game. How would you know that the rest of the game would have the women to be degraded, sexually harassed, or mistreated? This game was just released worldwide. How many hours have you been into this game? For women in this game, a respectful experience is impossible. When they're not being groped by their squad mates, the camera frames them at angles that accentuate their sexual value over their value for the squad. Um, no. A couple of minor sex jokes and fan service scenes doesn't mean that the female characters are valued for their looks over their value to their squad. If they are valued for their looks, then the series wouldn't have strong female characters prominent in their promotional arts, wouldn't they? It's really strange that a lot of these progressive writers are dismissing the strengths, the writing, and the actual characters of female characters when they briefly flash their tits or asses at people in some minor scenes. It's what happens with the people who complain about the fan service elements of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as well, even though they admit that the female characters are amazing and really well written, but they also say, oh, they are objectified for the male gaze. But, but you already have a cast of strong, relatable, and well written female characters. So if their over designed outfits turn you off, that's entirely on you. And by the way, this isn't the first time people got pissed off with fan service scenes in Valkyria Chronicles 4. These are very minor scenes, and if you think that these minor scenes instantly ruin the character because some men jerk off to those scenes, that's your problem. Whenever a character speaks positively of a woman's contribution, it's condescending in tone. At least she's good for something. I need citations on that. Who is the character that said that? To whom was this statement directed to? Again, minor scenes that the writer exaggerated into ridiculous degrees. A woman's ability is never given the same level of treatment as their technical skills would grant them as a man. At multiple points within the game's script, a woman is not even considered a person. They are merely a possession. After all, a gentleman shouldn't keep his ladies waiting. That is a very literal interpretation of that sentence. That sentence could mean a lot of things and you're not providing context, but you chose the most sinister meaning, so that's on you, writer. Even worse, the perpetrators of these sexist acts face no punishment. Okay, 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 stop. The guy got punched right after he grabbed her ass. What more do you need? This article is really good at not providing me context for the scenes that they're describing. So, you know what? I'm gonna skip over some of the scene descriptors and just go straight into the writer's take. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is just used as an example to highlight a certain point that the writer wants to make, and that point is... The issue with the problematic nature of the writing within Valkyria Chronicles 4 is that video games don't live in a bubble. Although many would like to argue otherwise, video games are inherently political and are influenced by the political leanings of their creators. Furthermore, video games can influence a person's views. Ooh, boy, oh boy, that isn't just a lava tick. Your mouth would be a great place for a Goron city. Video games are inherently political, influenced by the political leanings of the creators, and it can influence a person's views. Wow. I mean, wow. This is basically video games cause people to become violent all over again. Except this is on the sexism angle. So you're telling me that if I play Valkyria Chronicles 4 right now, I would be influenced by the game so much to the point where I would think that grabbing women's ass without their consent is perfectly fine. This writer has issues. She cannot distinct between fiction and reality. She's basically insinuating that Valkyria Chronicles 4 will influence you to become a suspect in hashtag me too. That is a very interesting take, writer. I bet Harvey Weinstein watched a lot of Vicky Tosen. The moment Ross's hand clenches Kai's butt, the game frames it so the act fills the entire screen. You would think with it being such a big moment, the game had something to say. Instead, it simply normalizes these actions. If you act in such a way, you won't get punished. 
Um, a direct punch isn't a punishment? This sort of mindset becomes even more dangerous when you consider the state of the world in 2018, while the hashtag MeToo movement has brought attention to the injustices faced within the workplace by women at the hands of men abusing their positions of power, we are far from shifting the needle towards genuine reform. We are at a time where, in the US, politicians are running to the defense of a Supreme Court judge accused of sexual harassment. Uh... Uh, that. As logical as that sounds. Are we still even on topic throughout this entire thing? And wait a second, you are aiming for a genuine reform by going to video games that have sex jokes in it. Wow, such bravery, writer. I am truly stunned by this marvelous display. When you have a game like Valkyria Chronicles 4 that contains a distinct lack of condemnation or consequence for such actions, you are setting a dangerous precedent. What dangerous president? Are you saying that this small scene from Valkyria Chronicles 4 and the treatment of women in Valkyria Chronicles 4, or at least according to your interpretation, will result in a bunch of gamers treating women like the suspects of Me Too? Didn't you say that the guy got punched while the other guys laugh at it? If a guy grabbed the girl's ass and he got punched for it, wouldn't you laugh? He got what he deserved! Instant karma! What more do you need? Chainsaw him in half? And by the way, the guys are more likely laughing at the guy getting punched, not laughing at the guy grabbing her butt! It normalizes the idea that women are inferior to men, that they exist for male satisfaction, and that unwanted sexual contact should be welcome and not challenge! Wow. Like, wow. You really are delusional. So that's how you take this entire thing, huh? It normalizes the idea that women are inferior to men. <sighs> no. No, it does not, writer. No, it does not. It's a freaking video game that contains a fictional story set in a pseudo-World War II setting. It will not turn you into the next Harvey Weinstein. You need some serious chill pills. If this is the writer's reaction to a video game with one sex joke in it, I wonder what would happen if the writer read any doujins. I read hundreds of doujins that have more misogynistic and abusive themes. I read hentai mangas where the women are raped by ugly men and that gets turned on with the idea of being raped, you would think that me and thousands and perhaps millions of others reading these mangas would be okay with people groping someone in public, but no, we have the basic common sense to understand how rude it is to grope women in public. Remember this camera footage? This is not okay. You should not do this. This is disrespectful. We know that this is disrespectful because we have common sense. We can distinct between fiction and reality. Can you, writer? Such portrayals make it harder for attitudes towards women to change, even with the pressure of the hashtag MeToo movement shedding light on the issue on a global scale. Oh my god, writer, you freaking dullard. You legitimately believe that people are going to emulate the things that they do in video games in real life. You actually think that video games make people think that it's okay to do certain things in real life when they do it in video games. You are looking at everybody like they're freaking toddlers. I think you are projecting yourself. Collectively, we should be working to dispel and call out such mistreatment. Only then can things begin to change for the better. Call out such mistreatment. It's a video game with a fictional story. But you know what? I'm gonna give the writer the benefit of the doubt. The writer is working on a video game outlet that definitely has progressive leanings, so perhaps this entire article is just a reflection of the writer's inner paranoia, thanks to working in an environment where they are constantly being told that men and video games and men in video games are going to destroy the world or something. Man, if only video games can be that impactful, I can finally be a legit fisherman next time.